You know, the CBDC, the central bank digital currency, is a response to Bitcoin. Bitcoin changed money forever. It disintermediated central banks. It disintermediated all payment systems. And uh, their response is to double down on their surveillance technology and to double down on all the worst features of fiat money by making them even worse. And so this is the beginning of a fight. It's a fight between the old guard, the old regime of fiat money and CBDC versus Bitcoin, which is perfect money. According to the Atlantic Council CBDC tracker, around 90% of the world's central banks are now using, developing, or looking into developing central bank digital currencies for citizens. Most of these central bankers have come to realize the value of digital assets like Bitcoin, Ether, and others, but are still grappling with the technological complexities. Though these government-issued digital currencies will be presented like other digital assets, there is one major difference. While most cryptocurrencies are decentralized assets free from government overreach, CBDCs will give government officials all they need to control every aspect of citizens' life. In a recent episode of the Max and Stacy Report, Bitcoin advocates Max Kaiser and Stacy Herbert discuss central bank digital currencies and the impact they would have on citizens. Kaiser, the former host of the Max Kaiser Report, explains that Bitcoin has caused the sudden craze for CBDCs, but both assets are as different as day and night. In the episode, Kaiser and Noni Prinz, an American author and journalist who writes about Wall Street, also discuss the permanent distortion between the U.S. economy and the financial markets. Please watch, like, and share this video as Kaiser, Herbert, and Prinz discuss these two important issues about digital assets and the U.S. economy in general. Also, ensure you subscribe to the channel, drop your comments and observations in the comments section, and check out our other crypto-related videos. You have the uh, attempt by the state and others, the corpocracy, the fusion of state and government, or fascism, which is what a CBDC is, it's fascism on the blockchain, uh, to survey every, every moment of your life and put it into a huge database and to control you accordingly with social credit scores. If they don't like what you're watching, if they don't like what you're shopping, if they don't like how you're voting, you'll be, your money will suddenly disappear because you have no control. So it's a total loss of freedom. It's total enslavement. And someone like Sean Leonard, who's an artist, a fine artist, great musician, is, uh, you know, the artists, as we've said many times, are typically are sensitive to these types of changes a little bit ahead of the population. They're, they have their ears and their senses are open to it. And they, he senses, as many folks do, that this is the last stand for humanity. Bitcoin is the last stand for humanity. So when uh, Italy just had their recent election, remember the unelected officials of Europe were warning already before the vote, because all the polls showed that they would elect this first ever female uh, prime minister in Italy, but the unelected officials did not like that woman, right? So they decided, they warned, they pre-warned the citizens, uh, the voters of Italy, that if they voted for that woman, that they could be uh, sanctioned, essentially. So this is the sort of mindset of these unelected officials in these institutions whether it's the European institutions that run and govern those 27 nations, or it's the central banks, or the Bank of International Settlements, which runs that, the, all the central banks. So their mindset is that we basically have a social credit score, and we have some choices that we offer you to make you feel free when in fact you're not free, you can only select certain things. And if somehow some sort of person like this woman in Italy pops up through there, that uh, we're gonna punish you. And these are the same people, this is the same mindset that will control those central bank digital currencies. Right, right, and the same elite who have taken control of all media and censor all dissenting views, they have overused various epithets over the years. You know, because the elites control the media, according to the elites, according to Paul Krugman, according to uh, the New York Times, the Washington Post, everyone is a Nazi. Everyone is a fascist. Everyone is a terrorist. So then what happens is, okay, Italy elects somebody who's completely out of left field, who's not part of the mainstream. And so when these same people, the New York Times, the Washington Post, start using words like Nazi, fascist, etc., everyone's like, you know, we're, you've already out, out worn your welcome with those words. I mean, 
You're going to have to think. That's the thing about the New York Times and the Washington Post. They're going to have to think for the first time in 50 years about what they're saying because the population is not happy and they have the wherewithal to eliminate them. Uh, well, they have Bitcoin. The people have Bitcoin and that's what they're choosing and that's why the battle is there. That's what Sean Lennon is pointing out. It's going to be CBDCs versus Bitcoin. That's the last stand they have because with Bitcoin, you have individual sovereignty and you have freedom and they can't take it from you. In the later part of the episode, Kaiser interviews Nomi Prims, an American author, journalist and public speaker who has gained prominence for her work on Wall Street and the U.S. economy. Prim speaks extensively about what she describes as the permanent distortion, the upending of the relationship between the U.S. financial markets and the real economy. The renowned public speaker explains that this distortion started with the 2008 financial crisis and the subsequent quantitative easing. Here is Nomi Prins and Max Kaiser's assessment of the situation. Permanent distortion is where we are living in right now. The signs are that the central banks have effectively completely dismantled the relationship between the financial markets and the real economy. Um, this has happened in two stages, one in the aftermath of the financial crisis of 2008, where we saw the QE and ZERP and everything else that happened. And we've talked about that a lot, um, where that distortion that that created between the markets and the real economy became permanent. Like we're not going back. There's no old normal. There's there's nothing we're returning to um, was in the wake of the, the COVID pandemic in 2020, when the Federal Reserve just basically went on turbo crazy boost and double the size of its book in effectively 10 minutes or, or certainly way faster than it had done in the aftermath of the financial crisis, nearly $9 trillion. Other central banks around the world followed suit. And the market was airlifted almost instantaneously, whereas the real economy was not. And so what we learned from that moment is that the distortion between the two, whether the Fed raises rates, cuts rates, whatever, we've got $41 trillion of money sloshing around the world. It was fabricated from nowhere by central banks, still there, still uh, underneath the markets, is there to stay. And the economy, the real economy, um, continues, whether the market's going up or down, to, to lag behind all of that on a permanent basis in a permanent distortion world that we're living in. Well, the reason it's permanent is because there, there's there's no idea that we're getting back to anything or that we're, this is, this is the new state. There, there's never going to be um, a relationship where there's a, a, an exact correlation or any form of correlation between um, the economy and, and the stock markets. Now, obviously we've been going, we've been going here for a long time. Um, it's not like there's ever been a period where there's been no distortion, but there's always been this sort of backdrop sense, certainly um, by a lot of talking heads and a lot of books, et cetera, where somehow we're going to get back to normal. Things are going to normalize. Well, what, what I'm saying here is that there is no normal. We're not normalizing. We are just in this permanent state. Well, there is a, a normalization equation in the bond market. It's called the natural interest rate. And so bond markets, 10-year treasury bond markets have, for the most part, hovered around that four to 5% range, and that's called the natural rate. And for a long time, to your point, they were artificially kept cheap. This caused a lot of distortions. Now the central banks are saying, we want to get back to the normal rate. So isn't that an attempt to get back to normalization? Well, it might be an attempt to get back to normal rates, but if we step back and look at the full entire picture, yeah, central banks are saying that and, and doing that. I, I think they're doing um, the uh, narrative around it that it, this is somehow going to impact inflation and sort of reduce the, the cost of food and fuel is, is, is ridiculous. But, but, but net of that, yes, they are saying that they need to fight these inflationary numbers. Um, but with respect to the money they've created, with respect to their books, even with respect to you know, the policy that the Federal Reserve supposedly is on right now to let bonds roll off its book to attempt to get into that more sort of normalized state, the, the pace of that um, really is meaningless compared to the size of the book and the size of the general health that has been injected artificially into markets over these years. And every day, we see almost new examples of why um, what's happening with rates, whatever it's called, trying to get back to some normal or sort of past average, um, as that might or might not happen, it doesn't touch the fact that all this money is 
been created and will continue to be created. The UK is one really excellent example of that. You know, the minute there is a um, an extreme crisis in the pension sector, not that that hasn't been a crisis in the making for, for years as rates have become so low on UK government bonds, on UK gilts, that there's not enough money coming into pension funds to, to make the obligations, to pay the liabilities of those pension funds to actual pensioners. That's been happening since QE. But with the current situation um, where those bonds have been leveraged by by pension managers in order to try and eke out just just enough to try and pay some of those liabilities off. And now that those bonds are falling in value so quickly, those leveraged uh, margin amounts need to be repaid. Central Bank, Bank of England, jumping back in and creating money. So so what I mean by by permanent is, again, this is the go-to situation. It's not a little bit of liquidity when we need it now and then. It's not a little bit of rejiggering of, of, of rates up and down to, to fight or not fight things that central banks can or cannot control. Um, that's part of this. But it, but it is about the fact that we have a permanent situation where there is money that can be created and remains available that lifts markets, financial assets in a way that does not get to and will not get to the real economy, whether those markets are going up or down. As Prinz explains, getting back to normal might be out of the question for many of the world's key economies, including the United States. With the near collapse of the British pension system, the United Nations has urged central banks to put a hold on interest rate hikes. A report published by the international organization focuses on the impact of the Federal Reserve's rate hikes and quantitative tightening policy on developing countries. It is almost a certainty that many countries will have fully adopted CBDCs within the next decade. Are you prepared to sign over your financial freedom to the government? Please drop your replies as well as your comments on the permit distortion in the comments section below. Also, be sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.